At 5 a.m. on November the 11th, 1918, this document, the Armistice, was signed. 5 a.m. Cessation of hostilities by land and in the air six hours after the signing of the Armistice. So who was the last person to die? The last Englishman to die was George Ellison. Now this guy was a proper hero and a legend in the British Army. He'd survived four years in the trenches. He'd been in the first battle in Mons in 1914. And he'd fought alongside, by coincidence, a guy called John Parr, who was the very first British soldier to die in World War I. Everyone Ellison had joined up with was by that time dead. Everyone that he'd fought with in the trenches was dead, yet he had somehow survived. He was out scouting when he was shot in Mons at 9.30. Only 90 minutes left on the clock. He was buried in a very small cemetery in Mons, right next to John Parr, and there they still are, side by side, the first British soldier to die and the last. Ellison was 40 years old. John Parr, he was just 16. The last Frenchman to die was Augustin Joseph Trebuchon. He was a shepherd. Now, if you've seen the Oscar-winning Sam Mendes movies 1917, you basically know this story. Trebuchon was given a message and told to deliver it to the front lines. He dodged and he scrambled through mud and craters under constant fire, trying to get that message to the Allied lines. At 10.45, with only 15 minutes left of the hostilities, a shot rang out. A sniper's bullet ended his life. He was 40 years old. Later, they recovered the body and in his pocket, they found the message. It said, to celebrate the end of the war, lunch will be served at 11.30. The last Canadian to die was George Price. He was from Moose Jaw in Saskatchewan. He died at 10.58 with only two minutes left. The last American to die was a chap called Henry Gunther. He was 23 years old and he worked in a bank. He was handsome, he had a jaunty moustache and a pretty girlfriend. When he got home, he was going to marry her. But a few months earlier, he wrote a letter to a friend in Baltimore saying that, well, war was a bit unpleasant. The army censors read the letter and busted him down from sergeant to private. To make poor Gunther even more miserable, they also told his fiancée that he'd been stripped of his stripes and she broke off the engagement. He was not very happy. It didn't help that he was of German descent but there's no question that Gunther was a brave and loyal soldier. Earlier in the war, he'd been injured by shrapnel and he could have gone home, but he insisted on staying to fight. From the moment he was busted from sergeant to private, he volunteered for dangerous assignments and was determined to redeem his reputation. At 10.44 on the 11th of November, he looked at his watch and he realised he had 16 minutes left to redeem his reputation. So he went to war alone. He crawled through the mud towards a machine gun nest. He fixed his bayonet. He jumped up and he ran at the machine gun. The Germans waved their arms and pointed at their watches and his comrades in the 313th Regiment yelled at him to stop. He didn't. When he was within grenade range, the Germans had no choice. He was shot dead at 10.59. Just 60 seconds left. Henry Gunther is officially the last man to die in World War One. You can tell me in the comments if you think he was heroically stupid or just stupid. But he got his wish. He was posthumously reinstated as a sergeant. He was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross. And there's no doubt he was redeemed because he was buried in the most holy redeemer cemetery back home in Baltimore. So, Gunther was the last to die. Well, not so quick. He was not the last. The last German to die was Lieutenant Thomas. He was shot by a hail of gunfire from a group of US troops a few minutes after 11 a.m. The commanding officer's watch was running slow. But we're not at the last. The fighting carried on in northern Rhodesia, which is now Zambia, for a full two weeks after the news of the armistice. The message took that long to get there. Around 11,000 people were injured on the last day. 3,000 were killed. The armistice was signed on a train carriage at 5am. The Germans wanted an immediate ceasefire, but the deal was to stop fighting at 11am. Partly that was to give everyone time to tell their troops, but 
why did they carry on fighting? The Allies weren't convinced the war was over, so they carried on fighting to get into good positions. This was an armistice, remember, which is an agreement to negotiate peace, not an actual end to the war. Ceasefires get broken all the time. The real peace treaty was only signed in Versailles in 1919, so they carried on fighting. I'm a lawyer, I'm not a soldier, but the contract said stop fighting at 11 a.m. Those were the rules, so they carried on. Some commanders certainly were being bloody minded. Some were pointlessly trying to win ground and some were taking revenge. After all, it had been a horrible and bloody war. Mostly it was artillery barrages that carried on right up to the last minute. They just kept on firing as long as possible. Some of them were firing simply to avoid carrying heavy shells all the way home. But why 11am? Well, sheer poetry really. Alliteration, it just sounded good. At 11am on the 11th day of the 11th month. Lots of 11s. In fact, the armistice agreement itself contains 11 pages. The American army ordered the 11th Regiment at precisely 11 a.m. to fire the last artillery shell. And so a 95 pound shell was loaded onto a 150 millimeter gun called the Calamity Jane, and it was fired at exactly 11 a.m. Nobody knows how many people it killed. The US Navy's last shell was loaded onto a long range 14 inch railway gun, and that was fired at 10, 57 and 30 seconds and a deep behind enemy lines. It was a big gun. It shot a 720 kilo shell, 35 kilometers at a speed of 700 meters per second. It took 90 seconds to arrive at 11 a.m. They called it the war to end all wars, and of course it wasn't. The end of the First World War was not an end to the suffering. For year after year, millions of men were packed into trenches, which sparked a new strain of influenza. Soldiers came home and they spread the new flu. After years of war, the people of Europe were weak, they were underfed, and they dropped like flies. It was covered up by nearly every country except Spain, which is why we know it has the Spanish flu. Probably killed 50, maybe 100 million people. So who died last? Well, who can say? Officially, it's Hermann Gunther, but it doesn't really matter. Every death was tragic and heroic, and every one was precious. All over Hartford, where I live, there are memorials to men who died in all sorts of wars, and every name on every tombstone has a story to tell. So to remember all those who died here in Hartford and across the world, we lay wreaths, we have a parade, and we're silent for a few minutes. Around 17 million died in the First World War, mostly soldiers. On July the 1st, 1916, 20,000 British soldiers died at the Somme. On the 22nd of August, 1914, the French lost close to 30,000 in a single day. They were ordered to walk towards enemy machine guns. They were gassed and they were bombed from the sky and from below. The British historian Alan Clark coined a famous phrase which describes the pointless but heroic loss of life. Lions, meant by donkeys he wrote. You might be thinking, why isn't he wearing a poppy? Today's the 11th of November and I'm in Hartford and I've walked all over town. There are no poppies on sale. They're not at the train station, they're not at the supermarket. Maybe I miss them, but that's why I made this video, you know? Lest we forget. Oh, <laughs> 
Keep your head. 